Welcome to our Adobe Character Animator Masterclass. In this video series, we're going to go over everything that you need to know to use Adobe Character Animator. We're going to start this series off small and easy, and we're going to slowly scale up to more and more complex ideas. Starting off, we're going to go over the basics of what is Character Animator, terms you might need to know, and the location of different panels. After that, we'll move on to different rigging methods and how those rigging methods affect the movement of the character. After we go over that, we'll go over how to rig a character, and then finally onto animation and cutting your first cartoon. So be sure to follow along and stay tuned for this comprehensive guide to Adobe Character Animator. One extremely important resource that we need to know before we go forward is our Discord server. So there's a lot to share on this Discord server. Let me show you. Um, first of all, we added a section uh, called Help With My Build. So if you get lost during building anything in Character Animator, whether it's this tutorial or a new venture, feel free to post there, and either myself or the community will do their best to help out. We have a water cooler section for just chatting and getting to know the community. We have a self-promo section to post the content that you've created. We just had uh, B dot 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 post their bluegrass, I believe it's like a bluegrass podcast. You can request a collaboration, so if you're looking to work together on a project with other animators, you can meet up there. I also have a meeting area if you're looking for CH Puppets to help you with some of your animations. I have a tools and tutorials section. This is this is the bread and butter right here. I have a freebies section. This has blank puppet templates, and I plan on adding some free puppets, some resource packets such as hands, mouths, eyes, and a bunch of other content. So be sure to check that out. We have a resources section. This has stuff like NDI, which is how you can use this software as a webcam, how to clean up your audio, uh, professionally, how to write content that pops more. I also have a section for character animator specific tutorials from myself and others in the community. A section just for voice acting tutorials from some of my favorite voice acting coaches. And then we have the studio section. This is where I talk with those in my studio, uh, such as my animators, my sound designers. We talk about our shows that we're working on, um, potential paid gigs that we find. And finally, my desk. My desk has everything from rules to announcements. In the announcements, you'll find things like updates to downloadable files or new cartoons that I've put out. I'm so happy to share this community and give back to those willing to go on the path of learning because it is extremely hard but extremely rewarding. And I hope to see you there. So starting off, we need to make sure we are working in pro mode right here. Select this and make sure you have pro selected, not starter. And we're going to be working with the Stardust puppet uh, just to get to know our areas. We're going to start off in rig mode. So this is rig mode. This is where you'll be working to rig your own cartoon characters. If you're going to be purchasing cartoon characters or using pre-made, this video is not for you. This is to get to know the area you're going to be working in to build your own cartoon characters. So starting off, we have a project panel right here. And within that project panel, you can see we have a puppet, another puppet, a scene, and another scene. Uh, that was because I imported this project twice. Getting to know what's going on here. This button down here, when you select a puppet, will create a new scene with that character inside of it. This folder here, this folder button is used to organize things. So you could select your scenes, drag them in, rename this scenes, and you can stay organized. Right here's a Photoshop button. Clicking this will open the character art associated with this file. Okay, so below that we have our triggers and controls panel. You can see all the hotkeys associated with this character. And we have uh, ZX, NVB, all of these are hotkeys. When they have a white letter like that, that means they are set to no latch. 
and when they are grayed out, they're latch. Think of latch like an on-off switch and no latch like a uh, pressure button. So you push it, it comes on, you let go, it turns off. Whereas this one, you push it, it comes on, you push it again, it turns off. That's the difference between latch and no latch. Default is whatever shows up whenever something else is not on. So right here, our frontal head will show up if no other head is selected. Below that, these are the things that are included in your hotkeys. So if you were to have a more complex hotkey, making this bigger, um, which none of these are super, oh, there we go. Smile is a super complex one. You see all the different things that gets activated when you press the button X. The head, right profile, nose, mouth set, neutral. The mouth set in the right profile goes to smile, as well as in the right quarter, left profile, left quarter. So it changes every smile across all the heads, regardless if they're seen or not. Going further to the right, we have our puppet panel right here. This is where the magic happens. We have icons. The icons are going to be tied into this controls. This is for more of live content over here. This is a visual representation of our hotkeys. Um, and you can change the layout of these. But these are for more of live content. And we'll go over that more when we get into the record and stream sections. Um, the main part you have to know for now is this section right here. Um, in the puppet panel here, oh, one more thing I should jump back and show is how to create a new trigger. So we have this plus here. We can create a trigger and a swap set. Creating a swap set will create its own group, and then you can create triggers within that swap set. And then you can see we could drag, like if we wanted a uh, quarter left and quarter right to be on a swap set here, we could go quarter left and quarter right. And then we could have quarter left ticked as the default by double clicking it or checking the default box. And that's how you create a trigger. Undoing all of that. We have the puppet panel. And uh, in the puppet panel, we have our master layer, which is this. This is like the file. And then these are the uh, behaviors that automatically get assigned when you create a puppet. Some of them you may or may not need. If you're doing background art, obviously you're not gonna need eye gaze and face and all of that. Um, but in this case, we're creating a cartoon character, so it's good that these are automatically applied. We're gonna need to add other handles later on too, like right here on his head layer, we have head and body turner. And we will be doing tutorials going over every single one of these one at a time later on. Um, and then we also have handles. So if we click the uh, frontal angle here, you can see we have right shoulder, left shoulder. And you can see this is tied to the paper doll on the right hand side of your screen here. Um, oops. Well, you can see that's how we turn them off and on. <laughs> um, and then we have the Lego brick and that's to add more behaviors. And then we also have if it's assigned to a trigger or not coming into Frontal, we can probably find one in here. Let's see if we can find a trigger, probably in heads. There we go. So you can see we have a left quarter head tied to the trigger here. E. Going over to the right hand side, we have, uh, select the top layer here. If you click the topmost layer, you'll see a blue words here, and this is your associated art file. If you ever need to change the art file you're working on, uh, such as maybe you updated the wrong file or uh, someone sent you a, a repaired file and you can't get it to link and you need it to relink, you can select new media in here. Uh, going over such as like, you can see it changes based on what we click in the, in the puppet panel. So that's when you click the master top layer. And then going over here, you can see we have a few different options. Let's come to the arm. Um, we have an attach style. Uh, hinge is typical for arms, whereas head you'll see like uh, auto weld, which uh, is preferred. It's actually locked in. Uh, hinge is like a, a, think of like a paper doll with a pin through it, whereas weld is think of like if they're glued together, like two balloons glued together, they're going to kind of pull on each other. Um, I never really play with the layer meshing at all. 
personally, but going over, we have this paper doll here, and there's two different ways to view this exact menu. There is the text way and the paper doll way. Um, this is to do with rigging, like when we use uh, these handles, these tools down here to build out our puppet. You can see this is how we place like a hinge and then we would use the paper doll to tag it and then you can use a stick. This would be like a bone to place where you don't want any movement, where you want it to be really stiff. Um, you can see we have different physics modifiers and miscellaneous behaviors. Dangle applies obviously makes things dangly you can imagine what all of these do magnet draggable is one we use we have it in the hand here now fixed means it won't move motion lines is like uh, if you have like a wizard wand and you want it to look a little more magical or action lines as they'd be called in like a comic book setting and then breathe can be applied to chests um, to make them go up and down to make it look like there's breath happening uh, lead and follow pair together um, I've seen that used a lot with like skirts, getting legs to work properly with skirts. Um, and then transform is a behavior we use regularly if we click our puppet. Um, oh, we don't have a transform behavior there. We probably have one here though. Yes, we do. So we see we have a transform here. These are the different behaviors assigned. So you see you use the Lego brick to assign the behaviors and then you modify them over here. So we can click the puppet layer here and we can see, oops, here, and we can see all the different behaviors such as body and transform. And then if you were to click like left quarter, you can see we'll have which behaviors assigned there, limb IK down here. Um, and all these behaviors will go in more depth later on how to edit them. Um, this is just good to be aware of where they are.